And there are so many qualities that make a good photo. Composition has perhaps the biggest part to play in this. It is present in every single picture that you make. My name is Chaba Winter and I'm a photography tutor at Ashford Brooks. In this video, I will rediscover the rule of thirds with you, reviewed holistically across every discipline where it is used and broken, historically analysed as it's been used through photography, art and cinematography. For those of you who don't know, since the artist John Thomas Smith has written about it for the first time in 1797, the concept pretty much stayed the same. The rule of thirds divides your frame into nine squares, with four lines equally splitting your image into three parts horizontally and vertically. You can give two thirds of the weight to a particular subject in your image. With this communication method, you can direct the viewer's attention into the more interesting parts of the frame. A great common example is in landscape photography. You can create a direction of visual flow in your images by placing the subjects on the intersections of the four equally imagined and spaced lines. If the opportunity is right, you can make the direction of flow go from one intersection to another, one horizontal line to another intersection, and so on. Now you might ask the question, that's great, but how do I choose which intersection to place my subjects? Well, with only taking the horizontal lines in the rule of thirds into consideration, typically in landscape photography, you simply pick the area of the most interest and frame it so it takes up two thirds of the image. This works for landscape and portrait orientations as well in landscape photography. However, if you are using one of the intersections to position your subject, there is another rule you can follow. It's called lead room nose room or looking space. With portraits, and I do mean shots of people in this particular instance, simply make your subjects look at the opposite intersections of where you have placed them in the frame. The further the subject is away from the center of the frame, the more they should turn into the looking space. This works well with people as well as animals. Shift the focus to a part of the frame which deserves to be looked at. However, at the same time, one can offset or balance out the weight of an image by placing subjects in different parts of the frame, perhaps out of focus or at varying levels of superiority to the story that image is trying to say. Not every artist uses a rule of thirds. Take Wes Anderson, for example. In his films, he has a very central framing in pretty much most of his shots. Using this technique consistently for both portrait and landscape scenes in many of his movies, like The Grand Budapest Hotel and Fantastic Mr. Fox. Interestingly, even Wes Anderson uses the rule of thirds from time to time, but in his own way. Let's look at this composition in more detail. You'll notice it's more of a square crop, representing an older style of cinematography, along with the grainy film camera look and pink hue color choices throughout the film. Notice how the rule of thirds change with this cropping and how the intersections of the lines come closer to the frame? Expertly chosen. The Grand Budapest Hotel is placed on the top horizontal line, but not in the center. That is because the composition is expertly designed to draw your attention to the hotel. Similar amount of space is allocated to the buildings on the bottom of the frame as to the pastel sky on the top, locking your eye into the composition. Diagonal lines represent movement. Notice the lift tracks leading up to the hotel go from the lower left intersection to the upper right. Just in case your eye would end up wandering too far in the image, the tree line in the background form almost an arrow shape leading your eye straight back to the hotel. The position and visual weight of the lift tracks balances out the hotel being placed slightly right of the center of the frame. Work of a creative genius. Which side or intersection to put your subject can depend on a number of factors. Does the object have a leading shape? And if so, which way does it draw the eye naturally? Does the area to which the eye is drawn positively improve the quality of the photo? Does it communicate the emotion that you want to portray? Going back to Wes Anderson, the objects filmed are shot at certain angles not to lead the eye to either side of the frame. Bang on central, placing the eyes in the aforementioned points of interest guided by the rules of thirds, are a strong way of introducing a personal connection with your audience. The rule of thirds is just one of many guidelines you can follow that results in great composition. It can be a part of the recipe which makes a great photo, 
The beautiful thing about it that it's only a guide, you don't have to follow it every single time. My name is Chabba Winter, I'm a tutor here at Ashford Brooks, and I really hope this video has been informative to yourself. Why not take a look at some of our equally as informative masterclasses that go into other professional photography techniques? See you next time.